So one of the big questions in biology is, why don't we live forever? Maybe one day we will, um, but until we understand why we grow old and get diseases such as Alzheimer's, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, uh, we will not have a chance to greatly extend our lifespan. One of the main reasons for this is that currently we address one disease at a time. And even though we have breakthroughs in, say, cardiovascular disease, other diseases such as Alzheimer's are rather recalcitrant, very difficult to, right now, to prevent and cure. And so what happens is that we have the decline in one disease and in another disease accelerates in its, in its frequency. And we're not living much longer than we did 10,000 years ago, unfortunately. So really what we're trying to do as a field, us biologists who study aging, is to understand what's at the root cause of this decline that we all go through unless we're unlucky enough to, be, to die uh, early. So one of the major theories that's been around really since the 1940s, 1950s, is the idea that aging is caused by a decline in mitochondrial function. So what are mitochondria? Well, these, uh, as many of you will have known from uh, high school biology, are the bags within our cells that generate chemical energy. They do other things, they process fat and also allow us to, to make other molecules that allow for cells to grow. But really, for this topic, what we want to talk about is their role in making chemical energy called ATP. And I draw this like a bag with my hands. It's really just a, a double membrane. The inner membrane is ruffled. And there are lots of proteins within that bag that carry out these chemical reactions to make ATP and energy. Now what's really interesting about mitochondria is that they're actually uh, another organism living within our, our, each of our cells. And unlike the textbooks, there isn't just one or two mitochondria per cell. There's hundreds, in case, some cases thousands of these. Um, and they're not just single bags, they're actually networks in there. We're learning that they, they divide and then they fuse and then they, they can, the cell can destroy the bad ones and improve the healthy ones. And one of the main theories of aging is that over time, well, we start out young and there's lots of mitochondria and they're healthier and they know how to function, they make lots of energy, we feel great, we've got energy, we can run, we can fight off diseases, our brain functions well, we can remember, and we don't get diabetes, we don't have uh, dysfunctional muscles, for example. But over time, let's say people like me who are now midlife, uh, we are starting to lose our mitochondrial function, that's a fact. And then by the time we're in our 60s and 70s, it's even worse. And an 80 to 90 year old will have much, much lower mitochondrial function and they'll have less ATP. And this is a problem. And we scientists think that one of the major causes of diseases during aging is caused by this loss of the ability of our cells to make energy. If you catch aging early enough and the mitochondrial dysfunction early enough, it's actually reversible. One of the, the new leading theories in aging and mitochondria is that the communication between the nucleus and the mitochondria breaks down early during aging, and let's call that stage one of aging. Now what, what carries out this communication is that, so if we have the nucleus here and the mitochondria here, there are proteins that are made in the nucleus by our main chromosomes, and those proteins travel across the cytoplasm into the mitochondria, and they help the mitochondria be healthy, they, they make it make just the right amount of energy to match what the cell needs. And what we found is that during aging, in the early stages, this communication, these proteins that move across to the, uh, from the nucleus to the mitochondria, they start to lose their activity and you don't have as much made anymore in the cells. Now the good news now is that if we could restore that communication, we might have a chance of reversing aspects of aging if we catch it early enough. Now, the analogy that I like to make is that the nucleus and the mitochondrial genomes, these two genomes, are like a married couple. When they move in together early, they're, they're in love, they communicate well, they talk, they share ideas, and that's what our cells are like when we're young. But over time, they don't, they don't talk as much, they develop different interests, and what happens is they, they stop talking over time. We track this down to the loss of a, a small molecule called, called NAD. We think NAD is critical for cells' health 
and their ability to maintain this healthy communication. So what we did was we simply raised the NAD levels back up in a mouse to their youthful levels. So a mouse, when it's young, has, let's say, this amount of NAD. Over time, the NAD levels drop by half. And we found, well, first of all, we, we asked the question, if we raise these levels back up to youthful levels of NAD, what happens? Can we restore this communication? Now, after one week of raising NAD, the nucleus was now re-establishing re communications to the mitochondria. They were talking again. And then we could ask, does this improve health? Does it restore the energy of the cell, which we think is a cause of aging? And the answer was, quite remarkably, yes. The, the mice, uh, when we looked at their muscle and their heart, they had a restoration of youth. The mitochondria were revved up again after just a week, and they were making energy. And as far as we could tell, looking at all these functional assays of the mitochondrial activity, their ability to make energy, their genomes activity, the amount of DNA they had, they went straight back to being young again. So we actually couldn't tell the difference between a two-year-old mouse and a six-month-old mouse. What that really is like is saying, we could take a 50, 60-year-old human muscle and make it like a 30-year-old again.